Hello and welcome back to Machine Learning. I'm Javita Christie and in this video we are going to talk about the importance of statistical tools in machine learning and we are also going to see some concepts of probability. So let's begin. In machine learning we train the system by using a limited data set called training data and based on the confidence level of the training data, we expect the machine learning algorithm to depict the behavior of the larger set of actual data. So this is a, a concept that I have talked about in my previous videos as well on machine learning, that there is a training data which is limited, but then um, you expect the, the algorithm to, to perform well um, on actual data which is much larger than the training data. If we have observation on a subset of events uh, called sample, then there will be some uncertainty in attributing the sample results to the whole set of population. So often it is um, recommended that uh, you, while analyzing anything in machine learning, you do not just um, talk about um, the whole population, but instead you take a a sample of the population because it's not possible to analyze the entire population. That is why we go for a sample from the population and analyze that and uh, we hope that um, whatever is the analysis or result of that sample is going to be applied to the whole population as well. And this of course gives rise to certain um, certain inaccuracy in your findings. So the question was how a limited knowledge of a sample set can be used to predict the behavior of a real set with some confidence. So whenever we are having a sample set and using that we are trying to predict something about the whole population, uh, we always need to give a percentage of confidence that we have in our conclusion or in our finding. And uh, it was realized by mathematicians that even if some knowledge is based on a sample, if we know the amount of uncertainty related to it, then it can be used in an optimum way without causing loss of knowledge. So scientists and mathematicians realized this uh, way back when they introduced probability and things like that, that if you understand what sample is, if you understand how much uncertainty can be caused, the percentage of uncertainty that can be caused if you um, try to make conclusions about your population using your sample then and if you are providing this percentage of uncertainty it can still be useful information and you can use it in an optimum way without causing loss of knowledge. So this is um, a small diagram showing you what what I just said that if you have knowledge of the sample and if you know the uncertainty, then together that forms useful information because um, just having knowledge about the sample or conclusions about the sample is not enough. When you apply to the population, you also need to provide what are the chances of that knowledge not being accurate for the whole population. Probability theory provides a mathematical foundation for quantifying this uncertainty of the knowledge. So this is where probability comes in. It provides you um, a foundation or a way to quantify the uncertainty, to give a percentage, to give a number to that uncertainty, how much uncertainty is there. And as the knowledge about the training data comes in the form of interdependent feature sets, the conditional probability theories form the basis for deriving required confidence level of the training data. So uh, the data set that we get, um, which is the training data set to train our model or machine, uh, that data set contains interdependent uh, features. What that means is that uh, one feature or one variable depends on another variable and uh, this can be any number of variables depending on any number of variables. So this is why conditional probability, which is a probability um, of an event occurring when another event has occurred or not occurred. 
So if you have that kind of a probability, you'll be better able to define the confidence level. So um, for example, if um, someone asks you what is the probability of the flight getting cancelled, uh, and uh, someone asks you what is the probability of the flight getting cancelled given bad weather. So in this case, in, there are two, two questions, but obviously the second question, which says that the weather is already bad, what is the probability? You will be able to answer the second question with more confidence than the first one. That is conditional probability. Now, there are two approaches or interpretations of the concept of probability. The first one is the frequentist uh, interpretation. Um, and we know that the concept of probability is not new. In our day-to-day -day life, we use the concept of probability in many places. What are the chances of raining tomorrow? And um, uh, what are the chances of uh, me leaving uh, early from work tomorrow? Uh, when we talk about probabilities of getting the heads and the tails when a coin is flipped are equal, we actually intend to say that if a coin is flipped many times, the coin will land heads the same number of times as it lands tails. So if it is an unbiased coin, we know that there is a 50% chance of getting heads and 50% chance of getting tails. Um, but if you, uh, maybe the if you if you flip it 10 times, uh, it's possible that in those 10 times, maybe seven are heads and three are tails. But probability theory says that if you flip the coin enough number of times, that means many times, um, infinite number of times, then the um, number of heads will equal to number of tails. And this is the frequentist interpretation of probability, where you know that if you go on flipping the coin, then the total number of heads and tails will be equal at some point. And this interpretation represents the long run frequencies of events. Let's look at another interpretation. So another interpretation of the concept of probability is the Bayesian interpretation. And this tries to quantify the uncertainty of some event and thus focuses on information rather than repeated trials. So remember the frequentist interpretation um, focuses on number of trials. So it says that um, if you go on tossing the coin several times, uh, eventually you'll have equal number of heads and tails. Whereas um, Bayesian interpretation uh, rather focuses on the information at hand. This is called the Bayesian interpretation of probability. And if you take the same example of flipping the coin, then the coin is equally likely to land heads or tails when we flip the coin next. The reason the Bayesian interpretation can be used to model the uncertainty of events is that it does not expect the long run frequencies of the events to happen. Okay, so frequentist interpretation says that um, eventually heads and tails, number of heads and tails will be equal. But we do not know that the coin is going to be flipped that many number of times. So it does not, um, it is not convenient to rely on the number of times the coin is flipped. So that is why the Bayesian interpretation uh, works on the information and not the frequency. Uh, for example, if you have, if we have to compute the probability of Brazil winning 2018 Football World Cup final, that event can happen only once. And it can't be repeated over and over again to calculate its probability, right? Uh, because um, 2018 Football World Cup final is going to happen only once. And a country winning in that is going to happen only once. So in order to get your probability, you cannot rely on the frequentist uh, interpretation of probability. But still, we should be able to quantify the uncertainty about the event, and which is only possible if we interpret probability the Bayesian way. So we can quantify this um, uncertainty without having to, you know, uh, run the 2018 football World Cup again and again. Without having to do that, you can still interpret the probability using the Bayesian concept. 
To give some more machine learning oriented examples, we are starting a new software implementation project for a large customer and uh, want to compute the probability of this project getting into customer escalation based on data from similar projects in the past. Or we want to compute the probability of a tumor to be malignant or not based on the probability distribution of such cases among the patients of similar profile. So in all these cases, um, the Bayesian interpretation comes into picture. It is not possible here to do repeated trial, as you can see, because uh, the event and the Bayesian concept is valid for computing uncertainty. If you, you, you cannot just um, test the tumor again and again or get new samples in order to test it. So we will focus on the Bayesian interpretation to develop our machine learning models. Most of the models that we will be studying here will be using conditional probability. And the basic formulae of probability remain the same uh, irrespective of whatever interpretation we adapt. Now let's take a look at some foundation rules of probability theory, uh, which are some of the notations and uh, uh, formulae that, that will be used in um, all these videos on machine learning. So the first one is uh, P of A, which is also known as probability of A, um, and it is the probability that event A is true. So for example, A might be the logical statement, Brazil is going to win the next football World Cup final. So this is um, this means you're trying to say P of A, and A is that event of Brazil winning the next football World Cup final. There is also an expression zero less than equal to probability of A less than equal to one, which denotes that the probability of an event happening always lies between zero and one, where probability of A is equal to zero means the, the event will definitely not happen. And if it is one, then it means that the event will definitely happen. And there's also a notation that says probability of A bar which denotes the probability of the event not A. This is uh, defined as P of A bar equal to one minus P of A. So that means um, usually probability is between zero and one. However, for convenience, uh, we sometimes show it out of 100, which is fine. And um, if you say that the probability of an event A is zero, that means that event is never going to happen. And if it is one, then that means that event will definitely happen. And uh, uh, you can also denote uh, if A is the event of Brazil winning, then A bar is going to be the event of Brazil not winning. And for such an event, the probability can be derived by simply doing one minus P of A bar. Because P of A and P of A bar, if you take their intersection, it's going to give you some null set. Okay, so you can do one minus probability of A to get the probability of A bar. It is also common practice to write A is equal to one to mean that event A is true and A is equal to zero to mean the event A is false. So it is a, a binary event where the event is either true or false, but can't be something indefinite. The probability of selecting an event A from a sample size of x is defined as p of a is equal to n by x, where n is the number of times the instance of event a is pre present in the sample size of x. Okay, so n by x is the probability of selecting event a from a sample size of x. And um, here remember that n is uh, how many times um, event A is present in X. So it's like picking a card out of 52 cards um, and picking a card and the probability of that card being an ace. We know that there are four aces in a pack of 52 cards. So uh, the probability of picking an ace would be four divided by 52 because four is number of times an ace is present and X is the size of our sample, which is 52. Let's take a look at probability of a union of two events. Two events A and B are called mutually exclusive 
if they can't happen together. An example of such an event would be England winning the Football World Cup 2018 and Brazil winning the Football World Cup 2018 are the mutually exclusive events and can't happen together because there can be only one winner. Even if there are ties, they are going to break the ties. So um, there's only one winner. And so both the events cannot happen together. Just like you cannot um, um, pick one card out of a deck of cards and have that card to be an ace, uh, as well as um, a card of uh, kings, right? You can have either ace or kings, but if I give you two events like uh, picking a card and the card being an ace of spades, so that is fine, that can happen together, but the card being an ace and a king's card as well, is uh, those two are mutually exclusive. For any two events A and B, we define the probability of A or B as P of A union B equal to P of A plus P of B minus P of A intersection B. So these are two events, A and B. And um, if you want to define the probability of A or B, that means what is the probability that um, either A is going to occur or B is going to occur together, then you can define it in this way. And if A and B are mutually exclusive, which means if one event occurs, the other cannot occur. In that case, uh, you can remove the intersection part because there is nothing common between A and B since they cannot occur together. So this will be zero anyway, which, which is why you can remove it. And uh, then the probability of A union B, or in other words, A or B, is going to be equal to simply the probability of A plus the probability of B. Next, let's take a look at the concept of joint probabilities. The probability of the joint event A and B is defined as the product rule, which is P of A comma B is equal to P of A intersection B, which is also P of A given B into P of B. So here, right here is the conditional probability. What is the probability of A given that B has already occurred? Multiply that by the probability of B. Or you can say that P of A comma B is equal to P of A intersection B. So event, a joint event means uh, the, the possibility that A and B can occur together, which means A and B should not be mutually exclusive. If they are, then um, P of A comma B will simply be zero. Okay, so this is a conditional probability of event A happening if event B happens. And based on this joint distribution on two events, P of A comma B, we can define the marginal distribution as well. So what is marginal distribution? It is this, P of A is equal to sigma P of A comma B, which is equal to P of A given B is equal to B. So B small b is an event that can occur. And um, another probability is B is equal to B. So you can have several B events occurring, which can, uh, increase or decrease the probability of A. So summing up all probable states of B gives the total probability formulae, which is also called sum rule or the rule of total probability. Now, same way, just as you wrote P of A, you can also write P of B in the same manner by just uh, changing a couple of things here. Here, instead of B, there is A, and here also, instead of B, there is A. And this formula can be extended for the countably infinite number of events in the set and chain rule of probability can be derived if the product rule is apl applied multiple times like this. So you can also apply chain rule where you are finding the probability of X number of events are N and uh, you can apply the chain rule where you are finding first probability of X1, multiply that by X2 given X1 then x3 given x2 and x1 and so on till you reach n events. So I hope you understood all this and I'll be back with the next video. Thank you for watching.